Okay, so uh, I'm going to draw two little race marks here. Here's the first race. And you know, here's Bill. And there's Jim. I know you can tell the big difference between the two. So they hit go at the same time. And we'll call this one Jim and that one Bill. Okay, so when in the, in the first race, uh, Jim was at the 45 mark. So here's the 45 mark when Bill crossed the finish line. Okay, so Bill had gone all 50 meters. So what's the difference between the two guys? Uh, the dif difference is 5 meters. Okay, that's what we start off with. Okay, then we get to statement A. In the second race, Jim starts 5 meters ahead of Bill, who lined up at the starting line. Who won the race? So they're going the same distance. So here's my Jim and here's my Bill. Okay. Get that a little straighter. A little straighter. All right. Second race, Jim started five meters ahead. So Jim started at the five meter mark. Uh, Bill starts at zero. Uh, and then they go. Well, Jim was only able to go 45 meters at the same moment that Bill was able to go 50. So at that case, they both cross at the finish line. Okay, so both, uh, so it was a tie. Whereas in the first race, uh, Bill won, right? In the third race, Jim started at the starting line and Bill starts five meters behind. Who will win that race? Okay, so think about in context. Uh, I'll start with Jim here. Jim starts at the line. Bill starts. He didn't start at zero. He starts at five meters behind. All right? And they say mark, set, go. Well, when Jim gets, let's see, when he gets to 45, Bill's able to go 50. So he was able to go, he's going to be at 45 with them. Uh, now what's going to happen? Well, obviously Bill is a little bit faster than Jim. Not by much, but he's a little faster. So he is going to hit the, the finish line before Jim will. So Bill wins that one. All right, guess and check. Uh, this is a... An interesting one model because uh, it's something that's used a lot uh, throughout grade school and, and high school and uh, a lot of math classes sort of implement this if you don't know what to do take a good guess um, but we're going to do what's called intelligent guessing uh, so we're going to uh, let's read the problem and then we'll kind of come up with a strategy to kind of work this out uh, eight marbles look alike but one is slightly heavier than the others using a balance scale explain how you can determine the heavier one exactly three ways Okay, well, so we got eight marbles, but I don't know which one is heavier. Uh, now, in my mind, I kind of understand that you pick it up and, oh, well, this one feels, I mean, we, of course I'm thinking bowling balls here, but these are marbles, so. Um, what, what, let's just take a guess. What would you, if you want to see which one's heavier, I might want to narrow it down. So I would, in my first wane, so here's the first wane. Um, well, let's, let's think of it like, let's do, well, Okay, um, so let's kind of label these. So I've got eight marbles. Um, I'm going to go seven A's and a B. Okay, and this will make sense. One of them's heavier, so I want to make it. It's different than the others. I just don't know where the B is. I mean, obviously you can look at my letters and go, oh, the B's right there. No, that's not the point. Um, so I, if I'm a guess, and I'm going to say, let, let's start with uh, four of them, all right? I put the four on there. Obviously, the one with the B is going to be heavier. It's going to weigh down. So these, these I, I just put them off to the side. Don't worry about them anymore. Okay. Uh, that's my first wane. So my second wane, I would put the first two together. Right. And what's going to happen? The one with the B is going to be heavier than the two A's. So these guys I'm going to put away with the other two. And then I've got one more wane. And obviously, the one with the B is bigger, right? So I now know what the heavier one is. 
How many times did that take me to do it? It took me three times. Um, and notice what happened is I put split it in half every time and then just the heavier side I just grabbed and took it. Um, so I just kind of guessed how many to throw on the scale on that one. Um, anyway, so that's a good sort of simple illustration of guess and check. Okay, working backwards, uh, this is a nice strategy when I have an end result and I want to go back and see earlier, you know, see the process. Uh, let's read the question to kind of see what, what it's asking us to do. Uh, it took workers five weeks to dig a 10-mile tunnel. During the fourth week, the workers dug two and a half miles. The next week, they dug a one and a quarter miles uh, to complete the tunnel. How much the workers completed after the first three weeks of digging? Okay. Let me point something out real quick uh, about this problem, um, especially as elementary school teachers. You guys have a lot of power, huge amount of power, to really make a difference in some young kid's life. When you read this question, what was your first thought? Okay. Did you freak out because fractions showed up? Because students see that. Students feel that. And if you, as a young teacher, as a, you know, an elementary school teacher, convey a fear of fractions, students are also going to gain that fear. Uh, unfortunately, I hate to call it what it is, but that's why a lot of students are afraid of fractions now, is they see them and they sort of panic. Um, so when you see fractions come up, th those are the days you act overly confident, you smile more, you be cheerful, and you just say, it's going to be good. We can do this. Uh, and I'm going to say that to you guys. Even though fractions are showing up, we can handle it, and we, don't, we, we can do it. We don't have to be nervous and stressed about this. Okay, going back to the question. So I just took five weeks to dig the tunnel. Uh, what do I know? I know that at the fourth week, so week four, they dug two and a half miles. And the following week, well, what's the following week? Um, that's a W, by the way. The following week is week five. And at week five, they dug uh, one and a quarter mile. Well... Can I figure out how much they dug the first, the last two weeks? Sure. Two and a half plus one and a fourth. Okay, so let's add those together. Uh, let's see, so we need a common denominator. So two and two fourths plus one and one fourth is three and three fourths. Okay, so I know the last two weeks they did three and three fourths. Uh, where they end up at, they got 10 miles total. Right. So if I take the, so I visualize this, so three and three fourths total, and I know the whole length has to add up to 10, so what's that length? Well, what operation am I going to use to find that? That would be subtraction. So I want to know what 10 minus three and three fourths is, and I'm going to rewrite the 10 as nine and four fourths minus three and three fourths and carry out the subtraction. So that's six and one fourth. So how much did the workers complete after the first three weeks of digging? They did six and a fourth miles of digging. Okay. Uh, let me kind of end that fraction thought with this. Uh, fractions are meant to be embraced. You as a teacher decide basically now how you feel about fractions. And I've taught with other teachers that avoid them and kind of have this negative attitude and I've done the opposite and I said you know what my kids can do it they might not believe it but they will they can do it and if they can't they will feel much better about themselves at the end of the year with me uh, and I just have that that sort of we're gonna conquer this no matter what attitude and I've seen students grow on that so anyways that's my plug on don't avoid fractions fractions are good <laughs>